Coming into the 2021 season, expectations for Robbie Anderson were sky high. He was coming off of a career year, a 2020 campaign that saw him set career highs in targets, catches, and receiving yards. The team rewarded him after that season with a hefty two-year extension, and if you know anything about the relationship between Robbie and the Panthers head coach, Matt Rule, you know that there's a special connection between these guys. Rule coached Robbie in college at Temple University, and when there were issues with Robbie being unable to get reinstated to the program after an academic suspension, Rule fought for an entire year with the administration to have the university literally change their rules in order to allow Robbie back onto the team. When Robbie became a free agent after the 2019 season, Rule wasted no time in recruiting him to the Panthers and immediately made him a focal point of the offense. And if the resulting breakout season wasn't enough, the Panthers went and signed Sam Darnold in the offseason, reuniting the young quarterback with a guy who he himself described as his favorite wide receiver he'd ever played with. So fantasy managers had a lot to be excited about, but the start of 2021 has been a complete disappointment. The frustration has boiled over with fantasy managers, Panthers fans, and even Robbie himself. However, there are a ton of signs pointing to Robbie being able to turn this around, and in a sense, that turnaround has already started. In my opinion, Robbie was one of the top waiver pickups in leagues where he was available this past week, and he's somebody that you should definitely be looking to buy now if you don't already have him on your squad. What's up guys? Welcome back to another one of my fantasy football analysis videos. And before I really get into this one, I just want to give a huge shout out to everybody who gave me some really great feedback on my Kyle Pitts video. Um, that actually came out two weeks ago, right before his week five breakout. And I actually didn't make any analysis breakdown for week six. And the reason for that is because I really wanted to follow up that week five video just breaking down exactly why I thought what we saw from Kyle Pitts in week five was not a fluke at all. And to try to talk down any managers who may have been trying to sell high on him. So instead of a Saturday morning video breakdown for week six, I actually posted a Saturday morning analysis post on Reddit, which really just went into the details of what we saw from Pitts leading up to that breakout and what we saw during that breakout. And the basic gist of it is that while yes, he did break out in week five with Calvin Ridley out of the lineup, he did it while seeing basically the exact same usage that he had been seeing in the previous weeks with Calvin Ridley in the lineup. So for any of you Kyle Pitts managers who have been trying to shop him around during the bye week, I'd say that you're actually lucky if you haven't been able to get a deal done because the breakout is for real. This guy's going to be an absolute stud going forward. But with that being said, we're here to talk about Robbie Anderson. So let's get right into the game film. Wait, before we do that, I actually want to talk a little bit about Robbie's role on the Panthers in 2020, his role to start this season, and why I think there's a bunch of signs pointing to Robbie being able to really turn this thing around. So in 2020, for the first time in his whole career, Robbie was used a ton out of the slot. His slot rate of about 33% was the highest of his whole career, and as you would expect, that led him to seeing the most total snaps out of the slot of his whole career. He was also used much closer to the line of scrimmage than he had ever been before, and he set career lows in yards per reception and average depth of target. But as we know, that didn't stop him from seeing a ton of success in 2020. He was a really solid chain mover for the Panthers, and he logged 49 first downs, which was by far the most of his career, and it barely trailed DJ Moore's 53. Robbie was also able to turn those shorter targets into over 500 yards after the catch, which led all Panthers and was a career high for Robbie. In fact, only three wide receivers in the entire league had more yards after the catch than Robbie had in 2020. All those shorter targets also helped Robbie be more efficient than ever before, as he logged his highest ever catch rate and his lowest ever drop rate. And all of that was definitely helped by the fact that he saw his highest ever catchable target rate. And all of this culminated in Robbie setting career highs in targets, catches, and receiving yards. And really the only stat that suffered for Robbie in 2020 was his touchdowns because he only had three, which was the lowest touchdown total of his entire career besides his rookie year. So with that in mind, his fantasy finish as the wide receiver 19 could have actually been a lot better if he had just seen a couple more touchdowns. So what changed to start 2020? Well, the most important factor has gotta be that Christian McCaffrey came back after missing almost all of 2020. 
I don't think it's a coincidence that in the first three weeks of the season with McCaffrey playing, Robbie saw a total of 11 targets. So three games, a total of 11 targets. That's a huge drop off in the work that he had been seeing in the previous season. And in the three games since McCaffrey's injury, Robbie has seen 29 total targets. After McCaffrey went down, Robbie saw pretty significant increases to his snap rate, which went from 73% up to 86%. His routes run per game, which went from 33 routes per game to 42. And obviously, like I just mentioned, his targets, which went from 3.7 all the way up to 9.7 per game. Also, another factor to start 2021 has been Terrace Marshall Jr. Terrace is a rookie receiver who was taken in the second round of the draft, and he's basically taken over most of the slot duties for the Panthers so far. He's run more routes than Robbie has out of the slot in four out of the five full games he's played, and Terrace has maintained a 65% slot rate in those games, which is about double the 33% slot rate that Robbie has in those games. So with that, Robbie has shifted back more towards the outside and also back towards being more of a deep threat as his yards per target has jumped back up to where it's been in most of his previous seasons. Also in the three games since the McCaffrey injury, Robbie has seen his intended air yards per game spike up in a big way. If he were to play a full season at the rate that he's been on since McCaffrey went down, he would put up by far the most intended air yards of any full season he's had. So clearly his role to start 2021 has shifted in a big way from what it was in 2020, but there's actually a lot more to it than just that when we look at why Robbie's been struggling so much for fantasy. So with all of that being said, now let's jump into the game film. The first and most obvious thing that really jumps off the game film this season is that the Darnold to Robbie connection just has not quite been there yet. These guys just have not been on the same page for a lot of these games, and I think we probably took for granted just how long it would take for the chemistry to develop between them. Sure, they spent two seasons together with the Jets, but with a full season apart, plus both guys essentially having to learn a new offense, Darnold literally learning a new offense, and Robbie learning a new role on this Panthers offense, there was just bound to be some bumps on the road. Things have definitely picked up a bit in the past few games, but to start the season, it was not looking smooth at all. There's been times where it looks like Robbie ran a completely different route than Darnold was expecting. There's been issues with the timing of certain routes, and there's been a ton of forced throws that have led to interceptions and near interceptions. Now, Robbie has not been doing himself any favors when it comes to the drops this season. Like I mentioned before, he is running a lot more routes deeper down the field and more so on the outside, which can make it harder to make some of these catches, but even still, some of these drops are just unacceptable by his standards and you can tell it's adding to the frustration for him. There's been a few drops that he's been credited with that I would say are a little bit questionable, but for the most part, if you're a wide receiver and the ball hits you on all 10 fingers, you've got to come down with it. And while there have been a handful of those questionable drops, there have been some that are just horrific. They're just terrible. You can't let them happen. Now, it hasn't been all bad for Robbie so far in this season. The Panthers have made it a point to try to get him some manufactured touches by sending him in jet motion before the play and either allowing that motion to flow right into his routes or they'll sometimes have him bubble out and catch a wide receiver screen. And they've even had him just take the ball directly on a handoff and try to make some moves in the open field. While this might not seem like a huge deal, it really is for a guy whose mentality has been struggling so far. Playing as a wide receiver in this league can be really frustrating when you do everything right 99% of the way. You run your route perfectly, you get separation from the defender, and either the ball just doesn't come your way or you're not able to make the catch. It can be really, really mentally frustrating. So for a guy like Robbie, especially a guy who's being very highly paid and very highly scrutinized right now, just getting the ball in his hands and letting him feel like he's a part of the offense, that can be really huge for his mentality and confidence for the rest of that game. And don't get it twisted, Robbie is still a super, super dangerous receiver. He showcased that in week one against his old team, the Jets, where they took one wrong step in man coverage and he was behind the defense for a massive 57 yard touchdown bomb. That's something that he can do over and over again against man coverage, where if you take one wrong step, it might just be over. And the same can be said for zone coverage. If you're going to try to pass off his route between multiple defenders, you need to execute that perfectly or else he's going to make you pay, which is exactly what he did against the Vikings for a huge game tying touchdown at the end of the game. 
While a lot of people sleep on his ability to make contested catches, he's also shown this season that he can make some tough catches between defenders and absorb some hits and still hold onto the ball. And of course, we all know that he's just an absolute problem in the open field, as he showed here against the Saints, freezing the defender here with a beautiful release to the outside and then shaking off the tackle to get some extra yards. And while Robbie has had limited success, he's been so, so close to having a ton more success. It seems like every single game he's had a couple plays that have just barely gone the wrong way, and if he had been able to haul those in, we would be looking at his fantasy stock completely differently right now. For example, he's been wide open on a couple of deep shots that Darnold has just barely overthrown him on, and if he had been able to come down with any of these passes, his stat lines would look a lot better in a handful of his games. There have been a few that really weren't on Darnold, they were just hard to make catches that Robbie wasn't able to come down with, and there was one that was just tragic against the Eagles where everything went perfectly, but the Eagles defender just made an amazing play to recover and get his hand in the way. But like I said, watching through his game film, it seemed like every single game there was at least one play where a huge play could have happened, but it just barely didn't. Like look at this play against the Saints where if he is able to just stay on his feet here or if the defender isn't able to grab that tiny bit of his pants that he grabs, Robbie's taking this one to the house. Or this one late in the game against the Vikings. A lot of people might have missed this one, but he's wide open here for an easy touchdown and I'm not really sure what Darnold was looking at because it looks like he's looking right in his direction, but he just doesn't feel comfortable throwing it. Also, there were a handful of times when the Panthers finally started utilizing some double moves on Robbie's routes, and they worked perfectly, but it just didn't show up in the box score. For example, on this play against the Cowboys, Robbie runs a beautiful out and up, gets a step on the defender, makes the catch, but his foot was out of bounds. Or on this play against the Vikings, the Panthers had already run Robbie on this slant route out of the slot earlier, so the defender bites on it gets completely turned around and caught out of position on the double move, and he has to grab Robbie around the waist, which draws a penalty, but it doesn't help his fantasy output. And while we're talking about the double moves, I want to bring up the clip of Robbie blowing up on the sidelines that went somewhat viral. Now, if you saw the clip, it did come right after Sam Darnold threw the third interception of the day against the Eagles, but Robbie wasn't actually angry at Darnold. When he was asked about it following the game, he explained that he was actually frustrated with the coaching staff who had been ignoring his request to run some double moves on the defenders who had been sitting on his routes. Well, I mean, on that particular play and that, that defender, I mean, throughout the game, he was sitting on multiple routes. So that's why I was trying to communicate to them, you know, let's scheme off that. And I felt we could capitalize. So I know my capabilities, I understand coverages, I understand football. So. People could take it how they want, everybody's entitled to their opinions, but it's just more so a situation with me, you know, being a veteran player and kind of knowing like what I can do to help the team is from a team aspect of me wanting to make plays for the team and help the team. So I think that that's a good thing. So the world can see I actually care because, you know, a lot of times people get extensions and get money and they just step back and collect a check. That's not the case with me, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm here to be great and my mindset is still like I got a lot to prove and I want to win. So I just feel like <clears throat> I would hope that that's how my teammates view it. I'm pretty sure they do because they understand me as a player. You know what I'm saying? So what is Robbie's outlook moving forward? Well, factoring in McCaffrey's health, we know that McCaffrey just went on the IR after missing three weeks while not being on the IR. Now that suggests, well, pretty much confirms that the hamstring injury is a lot worse than the Panthers originally thought, or else he would have been on the IR right away. Um, hamstrings, we know they're just really fluky, really hard to get a grip on how they're going to affect a player going forward. So you can't feel too confident that we're going to see a ton of McCaffrey in 2021. And even when he does come back, which by the way, at the earliest would be week nine. But even if he does come back, we have no idea what kind of workload they're going to give him to try to keep him healthy. Regardless, we know he's going to be out for at least the next two games, which leaves the door open for Robbie to continue seeing the level of usage he's been getting in a couple of really, really good matchups. Now, while Terrace is on the field, he's going to be the primary slot guy for the Panthers. But while we're talking about Terrace, it's important to mention that he's probably going to miss some time too. 
He was forced out of week six with a concussion. And as of me recording this right now, he hasn't even practiced one time yet since then. So he's most likely going to be missing week seven at least. So looking at week seven, Robbie's about to ball out against the Giants. That defense has really struggled this season. They've given up the fourth most fantasy points to wide receivers. And with how banged up their offense is, I just don't see them being able to sustain long drives and keep that defense off the field. I expect Robbie to continue seeing the usage that he's been getting recently. And if that's the case, I think he's just gonna torch his defense. Now looking ahead to week eight, it's a similar story as the Panthers travel to the Dome in Atlanta. McCaffrey's going to be out again. Terrace may or may not, but honestly, the matchup is so good that I think he's going to ball out regardless. I probably don't have to tell you how bad Atlanta's passing defense is, but I will anyway. They gave up the most passing yards last season, and while their stats haven't been quite as bad to start this season, they've still given up the 10th most fantasy points to wide receivers. Now, that's actually kind of insane when you consider that they've barely been thrown on. They've actually seen the fifth fewest targets to wide receivers against them. So 10th most fantasy points allowed on the fifth fewest targets. And those are targets coming from quarterbacks like Jalen Hurts, Taylor Heineke, Daniel Jones, and Zach Wilson. So basically what I'm trying to say is this Falcons passing defense is still bottom of the barrel. And I think Robbie is going to torch them regardless of whether Terrace is back taking some slot work. So Robbie's immediate outlook is actually pretty strong and as hard as it might be to swallow, he's actually a really good start in the bipocalypse weeks that we're in right now, especially considering how many players are also injured at the moment. So if you have Robbie, you actually should feel pretty good about starting him right now. And if you don't, I would 100% be trying to get him right now before his trade value shoots up. In terms of the rest of the season, like week nine and beyond, I definitely don't think it's a bad idea to try to sell high on Robbie after week eight, but I don't think that it's something you have to do because his value is just going to fall off a cliff. Remember, we just have no idea how much we're going to see of McCaffrey for the rest of 2021. And even if he comes off the IR and plays every single game, that doesn't necessarily mean that Robbie's usage is going to tank. With McCaffrey out, the Panthers were giving about 24 total opportunities to the running backs per game. DJ Moore was getting about 12 opportunities per game, and Terrace Marshall was logging his highest snap shares so far the season before he got hurt, and there was still room for Robbie to be seeing about 10 targets per game. So while losing McCaffrey definitely kind of forced the Panthers' hand in terms of getting Robbie that usage, now that he's been getting it, now that he's been developing that chemistry with Darnold, I don't necessarily think that McCaffrey coming back means they're just going to completely cut that off. He was going to be getting way more involved than he had been in the first three weeks of the season. I mean, they did not pay him $15 million a year to get two catches a game. Now, if Robbie puts up back-to-back -back huge games in weeks seven and eight, and we have a track record of over a month of him getting around double-digit targets and having success, yeah, it's probably a good idea to try to capitalize on that in a trade, especially if you're not confident that he can keep that up. But I also don't think he ever goes back to looking like he did in weeks one through three. So you shouldn't feel like you have to move him before he turns back into a pumpkin. Overall, I think Robbie could actually make a push to finish as like a wide receiver two in fantasy. So the fact that you can get him for super cheap and even for free in some leagues, that makes him my favorite by low candidate right now. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. As always, stay tuned for my Tuesday morning waiver pickups list. It'll be posted on Reddit. If you're subscribed to my YouTube channel, you already know that from Sunday night through Tuesday morning, you start seeing all these videos start popping up, all of my every play videos. Um, I group those together into a playlist each week in terms of the waiver pickups. But if you want a little bit more of a detailed explanation about why I like those guys that week and what kind of fab you should be looking to put on them, what kind of order I list them in terms of my priorities, go check out the post. And as far as the analysis videos go, you can look forward to another one every single Saturday for the rest of the season. So socials, like, subscribe, all of it. Later.